Hello and welcome to the second video in the UK Lockdown 2 build. This time it's an E-Wings Blackhawk with an iNav flight controller and the usual process that I go through to build everything. Now last time I talked about how I actually built the Blackhawk and the selection of electronics that I've chosen to go in here. Now I still haven't made my mind up about the servos. I think the more I think about it, I'm probably gonna go with bigger servos, but I'll talk about that in the next video when we actually install everything and do the final prep. This time it's all about making sure that the flight controller is okay, flashing it with iNav, doing the basic setup and making sure that things like the GPS and receiver and radio are all set. I'd always recommend doing this on the bench because if you miss this step and then spend all your time wiring it into the model and then find that either the flight controller has a problem or you've made a mistake with the wiring, it can be really frustrating. So I always try and set it up like this on the bench, make sure it's all working perfectly, then transfer it into the model and start trimming wires. So the first thing we need to do is to flash the flight controller before we do any soldering or anything. That way we know that it's all good and we don't uh, spend loads of time doing lots of other things to find out that the flight controller's not happy. Now I've been, touch wood, pretty uh, lucky with these things. These are pretty bulletproof and you have to be a little bit careful when you open them just because there's lots of little bits at the bottom and uh, that's the flight controller. Now, uh, I had a couple of people who do get occasionally into trouble by uh, doing all the soldering, then finding out that it's not happy. So my top tip is always flash your flight controller first. Once it's happy and you've gone through the basic configuration, then go to the trouble of starting all of the more advanced setup. So we'll jump onto the computer in a moment. And literally the first time I have plugged it in, Okay, let's jump onto the computer and see if we can see it. So it's appeared as COM6 automatically. We'll click on connect. And it's gone into the CLI because it's a different version of something on it. Now, if I type in version here and hit enter, we can see that it is 2.3. Uh, INAV is 2.5 something at the moment, so it's not gonna let us change it. So we will need to make a note here of what the target name is, F765. So let's disconnect, go into the firmware flasher, and we'll go and find the board. M for Matec, F765, that's the same target. We'll choose the latest and greatest version and then we'll say load firmware online. Just before I hit that button though, just a uh, point of interest, get lots of questions about this. Uh, people saying, is this flight controller uh, supported in iNav? The easy thing to do is on the main page of iNav, there's a link right here that says the full list of recommended hardware is available here. I would recommend using the recommended hardware, lots of recommends in that sentence, uh, but they work really good. But as I said in the previous video, for me, I tend to find that the Matec boards are just great options if you are building a flying uh, fixed wing model. So again, we're gonna load the firmware online. There we go, there's all of our wonderful release notes. Gonna leave everything else as default. Going right to the very bottom, and then we're gonna click on flash firmware. Now, if this works, it'll appear as DFU in the top, which it does. If we jump onto the bench, It'll, you can't really see that much happening here, but what's happening is it's been erased and then the stuff is going on. Now, if it doesn't appear as DFU, check out my video on how to use something like Zadig to replace the drivers that appear in Windows so that it works like this, but hopefully that will uh, all make sense. So it's flashing it now. We'll just wait for it to finish. Programming successful. That looks really promising. Let's give it a minute to reboot and finish the flashing. And then we shall click on connect. First question, as with all modern iNav setups, we have the options for boats and rovers. See my uh, rover boat setup videos that I did a while ago. It's still very basic in iNav for ground-based vehicles, uh, but seems to be developing very quickly. Obviously, we're going to go for airplane. That's going to reboot again. And when it comes back, we'll do the first couple of things on it just to make sure the flight controller is happy. But if I move it around, we can see it moving on the screen. Oh, that looks good. 
That looks good, happy with that. So, as normal, what we'll do is we'll start the top on the left-hand side, we'll work our way down. The aim is to get it to the end with all of these being green. If none of uh, these are red, then it will arm okay. If any of them like the accelerometer isn't calibrated to red, then you won't be able to arm and the motor won't turn. So, calibration. Let's go this through this first. This will also tell me the, uh, the accelerometers are happy. Click on Calibre Accelerometer, click OK, and then next time we hit it, it's going to calibrate level. And then what we're going to do is just going to put the flight controller in each aspect and click on Calibrate again. With these multi-board flight controllers like this from Matek, this is dead easy because you literally just pop them on the bench and away you go. Just work your way around, try and keep them still while you're doing this. The hard one is upside down. If you've got a box that you can put it on, I'll just try and keep it. In, in fact, you know what, let me put it on the edge of the desk. Sorry, this is slightly out of shot, but it'll work better. Calibrate accelerometer. Oh, it didn't like that. Okay, occasionally this happens. Something wasn't quite right. But don't worry, we're just going to go through exactly the same thing again. because this isn't going to calibrate what level feels like and all that goodness, but it is going to calibrate accelerometer. Brilliant. Okay, now we need to save and reboot that. Let's undo all the twisty cable. Click save and reboot. And now when we come back in and look at it in the configuration tab, it should be telling me that it's sat pretty much dead level. Well, within 0.1 of a degree. That's pretty close. Okay, next job then is mixer. Uh, I've got all the different types available here. It's defaulting to a flying wing, which is exactly what we're after. So we'll load and apply, and then that'll save and reboot. That's going to set the outputs for the servos, which are these ones here. And it's also going to uh, set up the motor outputs and everything else. It isn't going to turn the outputs on. Again, that's usually the last thing that we do. Uh, outputs, again, we're going to play with that and turn them on as the very, very last thing. We'll come into here and goof around. Um, depending on whether the servos are analog, I'll set it to 50 hertz. If they're digital, I might go to 100 hertz or maybe higher. Presets are getting less and less useful, in my humble opinion, for this. I'm going to set it up as a something like a right wing mini drag. It's a similar kind of size. It's going to uh, give me a couple of PIDs and settings, uh, but we'll still have to do an auto trim and an auto tune on this. And with it back, we can jump into uh, ports. Now, there's loads and loads and loads of ports on these flight controllers. It's one of the reasons why I am a massive fan. Now, we're going to put a GPS on here, obviously. We're going to have the external connections to the VTXs and all that goodness. The connections are listed in the manual that's on the Matek website. It shows you exactly how to wire it up and exactly how to set the ports in here in iNav to get it all working. So we will do that once I've figured out where everything's going to plug in, but we're going to basically use that manual as the guide. Configuration tab. Uh, I'm going to keep most of this the same. I'm not really going to change too much. I'm not using a barometer, so we're going to turn that off. Um, and we are going to have to add the GPS and stuff in later. The only other thing I'd be tempted to do here is to permanently enable launch mode because that's the way I roll. And that's about as far as we can go with the flight controller in its current configuration because we need to kind of enable the GPS stuff to get access so that we have, because you'll notice in failsafe, uh, we have got things like return to home set, but there's no point in doing all of that because we need to really set up the port for whichever one has the GPS on it. Then we need to go into configuration. We need to do cute things like actually set up all the other bits and pieces before we do that. So you know what, let's just get rid of the pitot tube as well because what we'll need is the GPS for the next thing. Uh, there's probably a barometer on here too, but we might re-enable that in a moment. There we go, it's automatically detected it, so we've got the barometer back. So we only need the GPS and then we can crack on. 
So let's just see, now I know that this is all happy, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go and solder on all the pins and let's see how it's gonna fit inside the Black Hawk. So now we know that the flight controller's all fine, I can go and put all the pins on it. And uh, that's a happy 20 minute, half an hour job. But once it's all done, it looks like this. Now I've connected a couple of other things onto here. Uh, this is the GPS module. All I've done is I've followed the wiring diagram that is on the Matek website. The Matek website is fantastic. It's really good at explaining how everything goes on. Now I have had to crimp some pins onto these connectors and don't worry I'll insert a close up here of how it's all connected um, and then we have the S plus input from the receiver and that is as far as I want to go in terms of the majority of the setup before we uh, get on to the next video because we can now check that the GPS is working we can check the radio working and this is then ready to start doing things like soldering power cables on ESCs too and all that jazz now for this bit, I've also prepared the radio. So this radio has a standard INAV set upon it. The way I tend to do this is that once you have an INAV configuration that works, you just use that one again and again and again and again. You don't have to change anything. So with this, it's standard stuff, the standard inputs, and we have the standard outputs. These are the ones that we're really interested in. We have the throttle aileron elevator rudder and a flight mode and an arming switch and I've got a couple of others in here for other different stuff. Now I've already bound it to the receiver that's connected here so when it's all powered on we can kind of test that bit as well. So I'll leave that over there for now and what we'll do is I'll plug this in and we'll just finish up the configuration. Uh, hopefully this is all going to work and then uh, I know I haven't completely goosed up all of the soldering. This is the only downside with these flight controllers. It does require a huge amount of soldering, uh, probably about half an hour's worth to get it all working. So we'll plug it in, preferably with the USB the right way round. And it's connected to the computer. The really nice thing, the thing I really like about the F7 based versions, are it's also powered the receiver. Hopefully you can see the light on there. And it's also powered the compass. Now the compass, we're indoor and this is a relatively small compass. So it may or may not get a good lock, but we'll just leave it on there. Let's jump onto the computer and see how that's working. So we'll click connect. And now we need to configure everything up. Now the way this works, if I ju jump into this and this is what i really like about the matex stuff um, the inav wiring is all on there so i've just wired it up as per as i showed so that's how it's gone it's gone into uart 2 see it says tx2 and rx2 it's plugged into these ones here so uart 2 is the one we're interested in so what we're going to do is we're going to go into ports we're going to go into uart 2 we're going to say that uart 2 is a gps we'll save and reboot and until both the GPS is enabled in the port and it's also enabled in the configuration tab, then we won't be able to do all of the other stuff. So let's just zoom down here, turn on GPS. At the moment, you see it's not at the top and we'll just leave it like that for now. We'll just hit send reboot. Now this time when it comes up, it'll try and talk over UART2, because I've just told it that's the one to try on. It'll try and configure the GPS and uh, get it to work. And there it is, it has appeared. Now, the fact that it's blue is great, because what it means, if we jump to GPS, we can see that we are getting, you see, total messages. We can see the messages are flooding through. At the moment, the messages are saying, I haven't got a GPS lock, but that is a really good sign to say that we we have actually done the wiring okay rather than it being the wrong way around if it do it like this and it's powered up but you don't get these messages um, swap the transmit and receive pins that's usually going to sort you out so that's really good next thing we need to do then is in the receiver tab now let's just move these across a little bit bring the radio in so i'm going to move the th a little bit close to the radio i'm going to move the throttle up at the moment we can see we have the roll moving so this means the channel map is wrong so i need to change it to the one that's going to match my radio if you're not sure just keep trying it telemetry recovered telemetry lost 
And now I'm going to move the throttle. There we go, and yours working the right way. Now use the sub trims on the radio to get lost. to exactly 1500 with the middle channel positions. This will also let me set my modes. So that's my arming Telemetry switch. <laughs> lost. Or let, me, let me try and move the receiver. That's going to drive us nuts, isn't it? Just constantly doing that. There we go. Hopefully that's going to be slightly happier. Lost. Or maybe not. And then what we're going to do is going to flip my arm switch. If we stick it on auto, I think it's channel five. Yeah, it is. So we'll have channel five as arm, which means channel six is normally what I use for this. So I'll set it up for Horizon. I'll set the middle value for manual. I always recommend having manual. You never know when that's going to come in handy, particularly for the maiden. And then usually I have nav loiter or nav position hold, as they call it here, as the top position for that switch. Again, channel six, hit save. No, I've done this the wrong way around, possibly. Yes, I have. So just go through and set up all of your modes as you would normally. I'd recommend just use your standards pieces. I would always go for channel, uh, one channel for arming, one channel for modes. Set your modes to be something like Horizon, Manual and Nav Loiter will work fine for the Maiden. So now we've done that, we're actually in really good shape. Let's just finish this off. So now we've done that, the other thing we can do is make sure that the failsafe is working. I'm going to turn the radio off and on the computer we should see the little red parachute come on and that means that that's all good too. To so with those pieces done, this is Switch now warning. ready to be put into the model. Let me just disconnect from the computer unplug that so now we need to pop this into the model again this is going to go into the bay at the back with the gps in front and then we need to figure out where this is going to sit by the side and also figure out where the vtx is going to go make sure everything's going to be staying cool put the camera at the front and then figure out where the servo is going to go into the wing so join me next time and we'll do all of that Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.